Joe Biden, I know what you're thinking. Who could possibly be a worse president? The old boy in the White House has trouble staying upright, can't climb the stairs to an aeroplane, is to bike riding what Ronnie Corbett was to basketball, and barely gets through a single sentence without dropping some kind of excruciating clangor. Hard to imagine anyone less qualified to take America's big decisions, but with a peculiar genius. The dozy Democrats are zoning in on a candidate who makes geriatric Joe look like a towering political powerhouse for the ages. Step forward, former cable show actress Meghan Markle, a child of Hollywood who married into British royalty and could now end up as the Queen of Washington. Quite a journey. The bad news for Meg is that Spotify cancelled her dreary podcast archetypes. Harry's brilliant plan to interview Vladimir Putin, Donald Trump and the Pope mysteriously failed to materialise. Who'd have thought it? And one bored streaming boss dismissed the gruesome twosome as a lazy couple of bleeping grifters. The good news for the famously ambitious Duchess is that a new poll has revealed that 25% of Democrats, a quarter, one in four, believe she is the best woman for the top job that she's the exceptional female with the outstanding capabilities to perform the most important job in the world. Ex-deal or no deal hostess Ms Markle came in with the same amount of support as current Vice President Kamala Harris and garnered significantly more backing than Hillary Clinton. The one-time First Lady who narrowly lost to Donald Trump only managed 22% backing. No doubt, always confident of her own talents, Meghan will not find the results of this astonishing survey at all surprising. But are these Democrats serious? Do they really relish the prospect of President Markle, do they look forward to the kooky Californian claptrap that in all its airheaded lack of glory she would worryingly bring to the Oval Office? What would life be like in the wonderfully woke world of President Meg's America? Would the unpleasant truths of US domestic discord and global conflict be replaced by Meghan's Montecito truths, a world away from reality where the sun always shines and problems can be solved with a cleansing dose of pseudo-intellectual gobbledygook? Would President Markle ordain that all Americans can rewrite their personal history and decide that difficult siblings just don't exist? That they got married on any old date they fancy as opposed to the actual date? Would she order banana messages for everyone like the inspirational missives she penned when she visited a sex workers charity in Bristol? In Meghan's right royal presidential regime, no banana skin would be complete without uplifting graffiti informing fruit fans you are special you are brave you are strong <laughs> would she base her presidential actions on feelings and emotions but no evidence like her husband future first man harry who launched legal action against british newspapers without a shred of proof they broke the law. And can you picture the President of the United States traversing the planet on Air Force One, visiting world leaders in the company of Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, an emotionally incontinent Herbert who has a comprehensively established that diplomacy is not his strong suit. I suppose that any party that chose Sleepy Joe to run God's own country can't be trusted to pick a credible successor, but surely we might reasonably expect and indeed hope that they won't select an even worse POTUS. Fortunately, and I can hardly believe I'm saying this, octogenarian Biden has dug his heels in and insists he intends to fight the next presidential election. Bad for America, not good for the world. But if the other option is Meghan, better than the alternative. Joe Biden won the last race to the White House because he was not Donald Trump. This time around, could the secret to 80-year-old Joe's success be that he is not Meghan Markle? Works for me, but you decide. <laughs> so what do you reckon, JJ? You love Meghan, don't you? I don't know if I love that. But maybe she'd You're be going off her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a candle in the wind, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I liked her last week. <laughs> <laughs> President Meghan Markle, I'm not so sure about it. I don't think any celebrities should be, celeb should be um, running for president, including Donald Trump, for that matter. <laughs> but it shows you how desperate the Democrats must be now that they are looking to Meghan Markle to be the saviour to try and beat Trump.
I'm just wondering what you think, uh, you know, given the events, the events of the last couple of weeks with Spotify, Netflix, uh, you know, we're getting some pretty caustic comments about Meghan and Harry coming out of those two big companies. Yeah. And it does sort of feel like, uh, I, I've got nothing against them, by the way, but I do feel that they live in an ivory tower and somehow or other they're colliding with reality and they're being found wanting. Uh, and I, I just think she's too otherworldly to be the president. I don't know. Biden's pretty otherworldly. He's not mm. even. He's not there, is he? He can say he can't walk up a, a flight of stairs. He can't walk across the stage. That she's better than him, isn't she? Yeah. Well, <laughs> isn't that what day it is? Well, do you think? He, you know what? I like. Do you the think idea. she is better than him? Yeah. I like the idea of Meghan Markle. And when this was suggested, your instincts obviously no. But then I thought I, I can understand what how that's come about with the strong woman and all that. But I'll tell you what, Meghan can't do. She can't play nice. And really? she, well, well, she's not played nice in the royal family, has she? Well, that's what we need, isn't it? We need somebody who can't play nice. We well, need maybe, a maybe, person, but you, she's gonna, she'd have to fit into, she'd have to fit in still. And well, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell that. you, Danielle, I'll tell you a presidential campaign you won't see. Vote for me, I'll be a nice president. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not part of the political no, lexicon. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think he should be a, a bad president. Look, um, I who don't. was it? Governor of California, Schwarzenegger. He did a decent job as governor. He took, took, the, took the role seriously. Obviously, he can't be pre pre president. Uh, may, may I refer I like you him. to uh, former Hollywood actor Ronald Reagan? Ronald Reagan, yeah. Mm. The first one to use the, the statement, make America great again. That was his slogan originally. Yeah, um, yeah he was great too. So yeah. maybe this is the right move for Megan next. By the way, what, so absolutely... what's Trump going to do next? Make America great yet again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the time they got back to this greatness that he keeps going on about, isn't it? I know, I know, but I do, I do, I can see there is some like, method in the madness there because yeah. she, she does, she, she will not uh, back down, yeah. will she not? Exactly. She <laughs> do you know what I mean? On what she believes. And... From her Hollywood mates, you'll get loads of free press. Yeah, but if she did become the president, and think about it, you know, this is the first man. It's Prince Harry. <laughs> I mean, oh. that would be a recipe for disaster, wouldn't it, oh. uh, Danielle? Say, can you please stop taking my photo? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to be seen. Well, no, more to the point now, could you please start taking my photo? <laughs> People are going off that. <laughs> couple, aren't they? Come on, I know you love them, but they are, they're, they're on the downward slide, aren't the, they? The tide has started to turn a little bit. A little <laughs> bit, the tide has started to turn. The tide has turned a, a little, little, turn a little bit. bit. A little. It's a, it's a tsunami. <laughs> but despite that, I still think that she'd be a better choice for the Democrats than Kamala Harris, 100%. Mm. Well, uh, well, yeah, actually, I, I actually do agree with you uh, about that. But then again, my dog would be a better candidate. <laughs> this is true. Actually, yeah, like President Chasma, I rather like the look of that. Yeah, I could be the first dog owner or whatever you call it. Uh, now, um, it's time now for a bad ad. When you read Time each week, you know more. You understand. Time flies and you are there. Time cries and lets you care. You understand the world we share. Read Time and understand. Well, this is what happens when you read Time magazine. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the most boring publications in the entire world. That advert is so inappropriate. <laughs> Here it comes. Uh, the audience have reacted well to me yet again. Here we go. <laughs> when did Kevin O'Sullivan become a <laughs> military expert? <laughs> I thought this who <laughs> reviewed EastEnders. <laughs> Never forget, this is the same man who laughs at children. It's the, <laughs> it's the laugh at children guy. Well, oh. look, whoever you are, what's wrong with laughing at children? <laughs> children can be funny. You got a kid, you got kids. I bet you laugh, I laugh at your at my kids. kids all the time. Mate, mate. People laugh at children all the time. It's not much of an insult. Uh, here's another one. Uh, this is an insult. <laughs> Kevin O'Sullivan looks like a hobbit and has weird eyes. <laughs> Uh, it says, I bet he's a small man. I don't know what you mean by that. Oh. And, and that's why he never stands up. <laughs> oh, he's a giant. Massive, mate. Giant. Massive. Uh, well, I'm not that small, am I? No, you're no, not. You know. well, I'm uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, above average. Above you. Average. <laughs> <laughs> right, here's another one. Uh, from now on, I am going to identify as Kevin O'Sullivan. 
Can I live in his Hampstead home? No. <laughs> uh, he won't need it after the Great Reset. Oh, God, that's the Great Reset. <laughs> Uh, World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I've got one from you as well. Really? Well, not no from you, for you. No one this is this me. is for you. This is, I could have written this. <laughs> <laughs> Says it's true. JJ always supports Megan, no, no matter what she does. Uh, and then it says, he is so offensive about Mormons. <laughs> what did you say? On last week's episode, we're, we're, I, I made a joke about Mormons. I think uh, so, so someone being married, and I said, I bet he's got 15 wives, better than Mormons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know, each their own, but, but we're not necessarily great supporters of polygamy. We don't <laughs> think it's a good thing to marry loads of people. No, I, I think it is. So, so, so... <laughs> So you didn't I mean to be offensive <laughs> about Mormons, yeah. did you? Supporting the Mormons. Anyway, it goes on, it goes on. Okay. He's so offensive about Mormons. <laughs> Would he make fun of Scientologists? Yes! yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. He is a brainless person. <laughs> well, one fact is good. So, so I used to live just opposite <laughs> where uh, the, more, the center of uh, the headquarters of Scientologists are in LA. Guess what street it's on? John Travolta Drive. <laughs> We're going to a proper ad now. <laughs> what just happened? A 13-year-old girl identifies as a cat and one of her classmates thinks it's a bit ridiculous. The teacher is having none of that. Be who you want to be, she booms, and how you identify is up to you. It is this ridiculous attitude, this vacuous virtue signalling by wannabe liberals that has led to a kind of madness in which a child at an exclusive public school insisted they were a mushroom. And the teachers all said, great. Two questions. Why don't they reply, you're not a mushroom, now do your homework? And secondly, if you were the mushroom's parents, how would you feel about shelling out 24,000 quid a year on a seat of learning that lets the young people in its care live their lives as fungus? A couple more pressing questions. Why is this insanity infecting British schools like spreading mould? And why is the government letting it happen? Back with the cat girl, and a clearly bright girl made it clear that she thought it was absurd for a human being to expect to be treated as an animal. Her teacher flew into a rage, called her despicable, and suggested that she should find another school to attend. And what was the offender's heinous crime? She said this. If they want to identify as a cow or something, then they are genuinely unwell. Crazy. A standpoint that uh, many might agree with. You're allowed to, you know, it's not illegal. If you have a vagina, the strident student continued, you're a girl. And if you have a penis, you're a boy. That's it. Outrageous! Confronted with such disgraceful, deeply offensive biological truth, the teacher naturally became angry, started shouting and called the kid really despicable. This uplifting exchange of varying views unfolded at State Secondary School Rye College in East Sussex, where Women and Equalities Minister Kemi Badenoch is demanding an immediate inspection by educational watchdog Ofsted. Badenoch is especially concerned that the teacher asserted there are three biological sexes and numerous genders. In her letter to Ofsted, she stated that Rye College was apparently teaching contested political beliefs as fact. There is, of course, no scientific basis to the dogma that there are lots of genders or that none of them are linked to the private parts you were born with. And, according to Kemi, for schools to tell kids otherwise is actually against the law. Too many teachers don't seem to know this, or worse, they actually believe the woke propaganda they pump out is incontrovertibly true. It's not. They're wrong. And yet, this terrifying lunacy carries on regardless, gaining an ever tighter grip in sinister citadels of indoctrination masquerading as schools. Amid this creeping dystopian derangement, the Prime Minister feels compelled to announce that if kids turn up in the classroom identifying as a different gender, teachers must 
inform their parents. In what sort of a weird world wouldn't they? Our weird world, the weird world known as modern Britain. Veteran Labour stalwart Ben Bradshaw is appalled by the very idea of letting mothers and fathers know their children want to change gender. Instructing schools to out pupils to their families would, he said, be totally outrageous. He was fuming. Poor Ben. I think he was genuinely serious. Actually, Ben, what would be, to borrow your term, totally outrageous, is keeping children's gender identity a secret from their parents, obviously. None of this is to detract from the very real cases of gender dysphoria, which, it goes without saying, should be approached with sensitivity. But somehow the sympathy with which this small number of kids are quite rightly treated seems to have opened the gender identity floodgates and suddenly we're adrift in a stupefying sea of youngsters whose nonsensical belief that they're cats and mushrooms is being indulged by grown adults who somewhere down the line forgot the meaning of discipline. It isn't kind to pander to every kid's every whim. It's cruel. Do the right thing. Tell them they're not a cat. Tell them they're not a mushroom. And for God's sake, let's have a government that stands firm against this gormless groupthink that is damaging a generation of children. You know it makes sense. It does, doesn't it, JJ? Completely. It's, I think it's absolutely nuts. If my son today says he wants to be a Ninja Turtle, I'm not going to presume that that's his choice for the next few years of life. He's just put, he's playing, it's um, imagination. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If a kid says I want to be a mushroom, we should not be taking that seriously and, and saying, right, from now on, everyone's going to call Belle mushroom from now on. Yeah. Like, it's absolutely ludicrous nonsense. It was a child in my primary school who identified as a train. Right. And this is, this is true. And he used to spend the <laughs> she whole... She was never on time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well overpriced. Late every day. <laughs> it was where, a heat. where have you been? Points failure. <laughs> he used to go around choo 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 choo. He thought he was Thomas. And obviously, <laughs> let's be honest, we were everybody was kind to him. There's no need to be cruel with this child. But everybody, no one at any point said, "Oh yeah, I think you probably are a train. <laughs> I think that's probably what's going on here. You probably yeah. should have been born a train." Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. It's madness. How old was this kid? He was about eight. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, school. okay, so, you, you, I mean, even that is slightly worrying. But the, the kid was unwell. The, the, the cat kid was 13. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And then, yes. uh, and then, like, placating it in primary school and then shoving him into a senior school. I don't know. It must have to be private schools because if you were a cat in a senior no, school... No, 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 no. In my the, senior no, school... No, whoa, 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 whoa. The cat, Rye College, it's a state secondary school. Really? That, that's where it happened. Oh, it's in Sussex. Wow. It's a state school. So wow. the reason I'm talking about the mushroom is it, it's very funny because parents are paying... £24,000 a year for their kids to come home and say, I'm a mushroom. You're not fungus. I want my money back. But, 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 but this is happening in state schools everywhere. That, that's and, and with kids who are quite old. Yeah, kids... that's where it seems to have been. At break time, you go out and you play and the kids are all kinds of things. But it's just playtime and imagination. Yes. Once you're back in the classroom, you're back to being whoever you are. Exactly. You know what I mean? And if the teachers are going to say to these kids, no, no, if you're a cat, then, yeah, we will treat like a cat, then that teacher should be fired. And if that was my kid in that school, I'd withdraw my child from that school. But do you think, Danielle, and indeed JJ, that what I think is going on here is a lot of teachers, to cut them some slack, are terrified. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of, of uh, pushing back against this. Oh, because, absolutely. Because, you know, there could be a complaint and then they're seen as someone who's tried to cancel some kid's identification. <sighs> so the gender ID, I think, in itself is a problem. Uh, but, you know, we have to remember at the bottom of all this, this is what caused all this, that there are kids who are gender dysmorphic, who yeah. genuinely yeah. are tortured by the fact they feel they're in the wrong body. Absolutely. Now, th they should be treated sensitively and with sympathy and they should be helped to live their lives as they want to. The trouble is, as I said earlier, it seems to have opened the floodgates for a whole kind of a tsunami of yeah. ID self-identification mm -hmm. that no teacher has the guts to stand up against. And you're right, and it, exactly, it doesn't do any good for the people who are genuinely struggling, who do identify differently, and it, it, this does them absolutely no favours. Yeah, it just makes it a, a, a mockery of it. We've got to draw the line somewhere. If you're a boy who thinks that you're a girl or vice versa, fine, that's completely fine. You want to identify that way, that's fine. But if, if a kid comes in school and, and says, 
I'm Superman. I don't know if I'm Superman. Treat me like Superman. You've got to be able to say to yes. the kids, no, you're not Superman. You're yeah. not Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. You're not a cat or a mushroom. You yes. are just Billy. That yeah. is who you are. Indeed. Absolutely. Uh, it's time for our political slot. This is a very serious program. I like to do <laughs> politics. Uh, it's vote for me. And uh, you might recognise this young guy. Uh, take it away, Nige. Slowly but relentlessly, the UK's political and economic independence is being stolen by stealth. The country is being asset-stripped of its many cherished institutions, its industries and agriculture. But membership of a European state isn't inevitable. Something can be done, and the fast-growing UK Independence Party can do it. The EU is not democratic, it's a sham. And I know that when MEPs vote here, they don't even know what they're voting for. So I said to that guy, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, I want to be Nigel Farage. <laughs> uh, he hasn't changed, though. He's got the same clothes, <laughs> slightly older, but, and, and the script hasn't changed, has no. it? <laughs> He's still pu pushing the same rhetoric he was, what, 25, 30 years ago. Yeah. Well, you know, consistency is a good thing. Yes, you know, he has, he's good. done OK. Uh, uh, but that uh, is the world's worst burglar. Did you see what he was stealing? <laughs> yeah, oh, see, he stole a toy car. <laughs> What's no. the point of stealing a toy car? <laughs> all, right, all right, I'll get 5p for this. <laughs> one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Once I fence this little Mustang out, <laughs> oh, I'm going to be in the money. He also... There's a, a porcelain pig that I saw there, yeah. which I yeah. assume might have been a kid's piggy bank. It was yeah. obviously stealing for a car boot sale. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, vote for Nige. Uh, someone's got to. Right, uh, let's go on to the best of bad TV. And we go back to the year 2007 for a magnificent excerpt uh, from uh, Miss Teen USA. Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans can't locate the US on a world map. Why do you think this is? I personally believe that US Americans are unable to do so because uh, some uh, people out there in our nation don't have maps and uh, I believe that our ed education like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq everywhere like such as thank you very much South Carolina <laughs> well, if she doesn't win I don't know why uh, <laughs> someone's going cool cool because yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have maps <laughs> yeah. I personally believe that U.S. Americans, US as opposed Americans. to what, yeah. French Americans, <laughs> Russian Americans? It's very worrying that there's so little, they're lacking such intelligence in the U.S. This is the future. That, that's a, that is the next generation. That's who the future belongs to. And they're, they're complete and utter idiots. Well, you, you say that, but I understand that Miss Carolina, that she might well be the vice president if Megan gets to <laughs> Megan, the top job, Miss South Carolina. I knew it. <laughs> and on that bombshell, I'm going to have to bring the curtain down on another fabulous edition of What Just Happened. Thank you very much to my regular guest and my good friend, JJ Anisiobi, who I don't hate as much as I make out, <laughs> and the always lovely, fantastic uh, Danielle Nichols. We'll be back next week. What Just Happened?